Hey everybody, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. I appreciate you taking some time out of your midday to talk some Lions football because I know there's a lot of heated opinions out there. I'm Tom Lydon, joined by Brad Galley and David Solano. We have, just as you have been over the last couple of days, reacting to the, the hiring of Jim Caldwell. Mets a Mets is kind of how most people feel, and I fall right into that category. It's almost like when somebody who you might support politically doesn't win an election. Right. You have to say, all right, well, that's not great, but we got to get behind this person because if you don't get behind this person, there's no sense in rooting for somebody to fail. So whether or not you believe that Jim Caldwell might be the best answer for the Lions, it is time for everybody to sort of hop on board and do anything possible to help make his job easy. That's my take right now. I'll share some more opinions over the course of the next half hour, but your thought. That would be the biggest thing I was coming into today and to talk about right. everything on this webcast and to talk with everyone out there because in the 24 hours since... I guess we all knew Jim Caldwell would be the head coach in the official announcement. Right. It's funny the reaction of from immediate disgust from Lions fans across the board, right. almost completely unanimous, to today and even last night I was out and there was a guy with a Lions t-shirt. I said, that looks like a guy who's excited about Jim Caldwell and being hired. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, do you have a Lions shirt? He goes, oh yeah, I really do think he's the guy. And 15 minutes ago, I really didn't, but my buddy just convinced me he can do all this stuff. I think people are buying into what he brings to the table. and. Like it or not, there's a ton of talent in place here. It's a player's right. league. He's the guy on top. I think people are confident in this team more than anything. David, before you weigh in with your opinion, let's right. do some housekeeping. You can give us a phone call, 248-356-0077, 248-356-0077. You can send us your thoughts on Twitter. Uh, we'll share some of those over the course of the next half hour, but get to us on the phone. We've already got a couple of phone calls lined up here, which we'll get to momentarily. 248-356-0077. But David, your thoughts? I think there's kind of a sense of disappointment with Alliance fans because everybody felt like Wizard Hunt would be the guy. Yeah. And then we all saw what happened the next day. And I'm on Twitter going, whoa, there's a, oh, okay, where do we go now? Caldwell I even tweeted something out saying, hey, where do they go next? Caldwell and somebody tweeted me back saying, anybody but him. So... Do they do they buy into this guy? I don't know. We we got to hear the press conference. We got we got to hear what he's going to say this afternoon at Ford Field. I think he brings a lot of value. Look what he did with the Colts. And let's not forget either that Peyton Manning got injured when that disastrous record happened. Yeah, but we, the thought though, David, at that point is that what does that say about his ability to coach? And I'm with right, you. And I right. give him a certain benefit of the doubt that you know you lose Peyton Manning three days before the season starts, you're going to be up a creek. But at the same point. 2-14 and 14 is terrible. Right. And you should, I you, you mean, I know they went to go get Kerry Collins, and they ended up with Curtis Painter, and Dan Orlovsky played some quarterback that year, but they started 0-14. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're right. 13 So it was a disastrous season. And what does that say about his ability to coach? What happens if Matthew Stafford gets hurt? Well, that's what I mean. That's what right. I, what do you do? What, what kind of backup plan is in place? We know he's offensive-minded, obviously, yeah. having been the offensive coordinator with the Ravens. But I want to hear what the people have to say about it, too, because we're going to wait to kind of hear. I want to ask him that question. What do you do if Stafford goes down? You hope that doesn't happen, but what's your backup plan? Well, look at what Baltimore had this season already. Joe Flacco, the reigning Super Bowl MVP quarterback, coming off a big contract. Ray Rice, one of the best fantasy running backs out right. there, real running backs, that was a big headache for people because I know people that had him on their fantasy yep. team watched that team. Where did he go? Where's Ray Rice? That offense was 29th in the league, and as Kyle Minky of Booth Newspapers pointed out, in the press release from the Lions saying that Jim Caldwell was the head coach, 13 words about 2013. I understand what he's done in the past, but what have you mm -hmm. done for me lately is the mantra in the NFL. Of course. Lately it's wasn't very line. good for Jim Caldwell. Yeah, he lost Dennis Pitta right before the season started. Uh, Anquan Bolden, of course, went to the San Francisco 49ers in a trade, so Joe Flacco lost two of his favorite targets. Ray Rice wasn't nearly as effective as he was during, during yeah. the postseason stretch of the 2012 season. So there are built-in excuses, but Lions fans have been hearing about built-in excuses for the last That's six the decades. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants to hear any excuses. They've been patient enough. All right, well, let's go to the phones. we got a uh, phone call here. I think Abraham's on line one, so I'm going to pick it up and go to him. Abraham, you're there. Welcome. Thanks for watching us today. And what's on your mind? Are you a fan or not a fan of the Caldwell hiring? Well, okay, well, I'm personally a Patriots fan, but hearing Tony Junkie backing him up, it makes me want to go to uh, Family Mall and buy a, a jersey. But, but my, I mean, if he backed up, I mean, if he coached Peyton Manning, it may, I mean, you, you got to give him the benefit of the doubt. And, 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 and if, if I want to become a fan, you know, I'm putting my time in an investment, and I want to return on an investment. Mm -hmm. You know, because every day I'm putting those minutes out there of my time, and I want something back. So I got to see, you know, and their track record, is, 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 you know, it, it just kills you. So I, I got to see. I like the hiring. You know, I, I like it. You know? Why? How come? What excites you about it? it I, I thought about it logically. I take my emotions out of it. He coached to you, Manny. You know what I mean? He, he, he did, he did uh, good with uh, Flacco. 
And, and it's better than Scott Linehan because if you think about it, Scott Linehan only had Macy Shepard in the shotgun. So, so, so now, so now it will give uh, some diversity with with Matthew Stafford. And I'm telling you, Matthew Stafford is a better, better listener because he's like, oh, I don't need a guru. I mean, it's, that, that, that's that's stupidity. That's stu stupidity, man. It's just I, I don't I, I don't know. I'm frustrated. I mean, I like I, re I respect the players. I, I I have tons of respect, but it's wasted talent. It's wasted talent. Calvin Johnson, the best receiver in the league. You're, just I, I I don't know man. And Dominican too. He he's gonna leave. He's not gonna stick around. Trust me. <laughs> well, it's not. I, I mean it's just the truth. It, it, it is what it is. It, I, I feel sorry for uh, Calvin man. The best receiver in the, in the class act. If he was to be on the Patriots, four Super Bowl rings right now. I guarantee you. It, my heart tears up for him man. Yep. Abe, hey, I appreciate you checking in. Thanks a lot, buddy. We'll talk to you again soon. I think that what he says reflects a lot of what the fan base thinks, right, and right. it goes right back to what this Lions fan base experienced with Barry Sanders. And Brad, you're a guy who grew up here, so you uh -huh. saw it firsthand. Just so frustrating to know that you have one of the most talented people ever in the history of the National Football League, and you can't string together any consistent level of success. And now people are viewing Calvin Johnson's career much the same way. You know, he gets here in 2007. All of a sudden, it's 2014, and what have they accomplished? Not a single playoff uh, win. One playoff appearance, and... It goes back to, I think, a lot of people are comparing this hire to the Bobby Ross hire. You're living on one Super Bowl appearance, some playoff success, and some good players around there, and hoping that he can replicate that in Jim Caldwell bringing it here. The players are there. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. one big twist I have, and that's, that's been brought up, and obviously a lot of people talk about it, do you let Matthew Stafford have all the reins on offense. Right. Is this a type? Is this right. is this now you win with your guy or you lose with your guy? Right. Is this the type of thing where you let Indomitian Sue take over that locker mm -hmm. room and Jim Caldwell is more of a head figure, or do you want someone in there that's going to be abrasive? Clearly, that's not his mantra. That's not what he is. Mm -hmm. So this is a player's team. It's a player's game, and maybe he is just the guiding force. All right, let's go back to the phones. We got another phone call waiting for us here on line two. How you doing? Thanks for joining us. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Ron Zelinski from Gibraltar, Michigan. Here. All right. What are your thoughts? Are you in the Jim Caldwell camp or not? Uh, my question is, what is the plan to change a bunch of, uh, I'm going to use the term prima donna individuals, in, back into a team? Because I think uh, Michigan State right now could beat the Lions because they play as a team. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't get too ridiculous. I understand where you're coming from. What gets me, and it falls right in behind what you're talking about, and I saw this you know, tweeted out by a guy who we got to know well, who was a former Lion, Lawrence Jackson, yesterday, who said that the players... Uh, will play with more intensity, maybe 15% more intensity, because they have respect for the coach. And I was just so baffled by the fact that a, an NFL player or a former NFL player who played for this team would, in essence, admit to the fact that they would consistently make boneheaded mistakes because, what, they don't have respect for the coach? Don't, have respect, don't you have respect for your teammates? Don't yeah, you have respect right. for yourself? Right. Don't you have respect for the paycheck that you're pulling in? And that, to me, is where it comes down to the accountability. So hopefully, to speak to your point, Caldwell's the type of guy who'll bring in a staff around him that can make these players a bit more accountable. That would be different, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think Jim Schwartz tried to hold him accountable. Well, that was his job. Call them the Lions, and I think we'd have a winner. <laughs> well, what do you think that uh, Caldwell brings to the table that's positive, though, in your opinion, that you see that could work well here in Detroit? The only thing, only thing I see is fresh blood. Uh, everybody pointed the finger at the last coach and the ones before that, maybe with fresh blood, the public and the team will try to turn it around 100%, I hope. So the fresh, uh, kind of the fresh start, uh, start fresh angle is kind of what you're taking, huh? Yeah, we're short of, uh, again, removing certain players to make them understand that they have to play as a team. Uh, that, that's the only thing. I don't like the way individuals go out there and then make bonehead mistakes mm -hmm. because they're worried about their paycheck and not about what the, the guy next to them is doing. Yep. Well, thank you very much for calling. You made a lot of good points. I appreciate you checking in. And, you know, I'm watching the Broncos and the Chargers the other day, mm -hmm. and the Chargers look like the Lions on defense. They're jumping off sides five times throughout the game. So it just goes to show you that even when you do get to the postseason, there is going to be a certain level of mistakes that come along the way. But that is the stuff that has just angered me over the years, the right. things that you consistently see year to year, dumb, boneheaded mistakes. Again, 248-356-0077 is the number you can call to talk to. David Solano, Brad Galley, Tom Lydon. We're dissecting the hiring of Jim Caldwell today, the big day down at Ford Field, where he will formally be introduced as the next head coach 
of the Lions. Now, we experienced yesterday a lot of positive feedback from the players. Yeah. I spoke with Dominican Sue. I spoke with Nate Burleson, reached out to Joy Bell as well, who played with under Jim Caldwell in Indianapolis. He was on the practice squad at the time, got a couple of uh, games with the active roster. But they all seem to be in agreement. Now, obviously, what else are the players going to say? I hate this move. Now coach me, and they're not going to say that. They're not going to say that. None of them are going to say that. If they say that, they're not going to have a job. So you don't want to read too much into the authenticity or honesty of what they're saying. They're saying the right thing. But what they, what I really liked about what Indomitian told me yesterday, and he went there himself, he in essence said, you know, it doesn't matter who coaches us. Totally agree. This comes down to right. our shoulders. And a caller, I think it was Abe, the first one who called in here on the show, talked about Sue. And that's going to be the next big issue with this team because – over the past few years, they've made the decision in the offseason to go out and extend Calvin Johnson to free up some money, to extend uh, Matthew Stafford to free up some money. Mm -hmm. The cap hit that Indomitian Sue is bringing to this team this year is immense. It's about $25 million. And they are, in a, they are at, against the wall right now trying to figure out what to do with him because mm -hmm. he has shown signs of maturity, mm -hmm. but he's always going to be right on the edge there. And for the rest of his career, he's going to be one hit away, one penalty away, one fine away from sitting out a couple of games. So yeah. is this the guy that you want to invest in over the long term? Unless they do extend him, they're going to take a huge cap hit this year, which is one of the reasons yeah. that Wisenhunt didn't necessarily want to come here because he felt as though the Lions were up against the cap a little bit. What would you do in the Indomitian Sioux situation? given the fact that he's going to cost you about 20 to $25 million. We'll talk about it. You weigh in 248-356-0077. Tweet us at David Solano, WXYZ, Tom Lydon, Brad Galley. I'll weigh in first and say it's kind of like the, the situation where you imagine playing against the Dominican Sioux or having him right. mm -hmm. on your team. I don't think there's anyone in this town that wants to see him line up against Matthew Stafford no, in this no offense. Way. So you kind of get lost sometimes in the way that he answers questions at press conferences, the way he misbehaves and does things that tick everyone off. But he's a darn good football player. So I think without a doubt, you try to find a way to restructure that contract, I think, as fast as possible. He's got a big payday coming to him. He knows that. Try to restructure him, keep him here long term. He's matured a lot, no question, as you mentioned, Tom. And I've talked to some buddies of mine about this, and they, they, they tell me, my buddies from out of state are like, David, does he even want to stay in Detroit? And that's the million dollar question. That's he consistently says he right. wants to stay here. He's found a home here in a comfort zone here. I don't think being in Detroit has hindered his ability to market himself nationally. That's Not always whatsoever. the big question. Yeah. Like, is he being held back from a national perspective because of where he plays? And there has not been a defensive tackle in the history of the National Football League who has made more money off the field. The only guy who's ever come close, there's two of them. Well, he was a linebacker. The only that's guys true. who've ever come close are Reggie White and Mean Joe Green. Yeah. And given, you know, the passage of time, the money that those guys made isn't anywhere near what Ndamukong Sue made. Now, is there a certain appeal of him playing with the star in his helmet of the Dallas Cowboys, and will teams like that come knocking down his door should he get to free agency next year? Don't forget he could always be franchised, but to franchise a guy like that means that each and every year you're going to be paying top dollar to keep him on your roster. I think it's telling. <clears throat> I think his intentions will get a big whiff of what his true intentions are if there's no new deal put in place by the time mm -hmm. training camp comes around. Because if he's going to put that big cap number right. on them this season, he's almost sticking it to them. I mean, if you truly are a guy that wants to be here long term, the best thing for this team is for him to restructure his deal. If he doesn't do it immediately, it's telling a little bit. Understand, I understand. You're right. trying to make your buck. Right. You're trying right. to make your money, and there's no guarantee you'll continue your career in the NFL. Yeah. But that'll be telling. Let's read a couple of tweets that have come into us here over the last couple of days and the last couple of minutes. The guy who's all over this and very upset about it is the guy, Dr. Geek, at Dr. Geek. Well, one Super Bowl win would have made Wisenhunt more than $1 million in sports advertising contract. People still hung up on the fact that Wisenhunt did not get the job here or chose to go to Tennessee. Ernie Stat Sitzkowski says, only the Lions can figure out how to lose even without playing a game. Peyton made Caldwell, not the other way around. You know, Mark... At Mark M five one seven says, I say give him a chance. Can't do worse than the last fifty seven seasons, uh, and I get that to a certain extent. One of the great, greatest things I heard while driving around listening to the radio was, mm -hmm. you know, we've had the smart guy, Schwartz. We've had the military guy, Marinelli. We've had the smooth guy with the media, Mariucci. Yeah. You know, we've had the fiery guy and Bobby Ross with the experience. You know, what we haven't had here as the Lions organization a is winner. a guy who's wearing the Super Bowl rings. A guy who is a stand-up guy, known for his integrity, is pretty mild-mannered. So, like, why did he give that guy a chance? 
And that's unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, where we stand today. Now, the other bad news that came in today is that the person who reportedly was going to be the offensive coordinator, the Eagles uh, quarterbacks coach, Bill Lazor, has now gone and signed with the Miami Dolphins in that yeah. capacity. So what does that say about how other people, even below Caldwell, are reacting to this news and possibly reacting to their future employment. And that move, I think, was so interesting because the reaction to Caldwell was so negative and Lazor right. coming in as the quarterback guru, offensive coordinator, could work with Stafford. The reaction there was immediately positive. So when you lose him, it's a question now, who does Caldwell bring in? Uh, it's going to be so interesting. And I think something um, that our second caller, Ron, said, fresh blood. Because the question after Wisenhunt went to Tennessee that I posed to a few people, just hypothetically, mm -hmm. Would you rather have had Jim Schwartz stay, or would you want Jim Caldwell? And overwhelmingly, like people said, well, you ha we had to get rid of Schwartz. Yeah, but compare the two. Who would right. you rather still have here? And I think the hot seat would have continued on for a year. It would have been uncomfortable. The move had to be made. But it's an interesting dynamic to look at, because fresh blood will help. I, I, I perceive getting rid of Schwartz had to be done. Well, there's a... You look at the offensive coordinator situation. Who do people want to see brought in? I mean, who 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 would you see as a logical fit for Caldwell to bring in? There's been multiple names mentioned. I think the quarterback expertise is a big deal, and I think as we saw yesterday, Ed Warder reports that Laser is going to be the choice. It's not done right away, and all of a sudden he retreats his statement, says, "Well, he's just one of the candidates." So mm -hmm. I think it's too early to tell. And we mm -hmm. do know uh, it seems as if the defensive coordinator is going to be Terrell Austin from 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 Baltimore. <laughs> well. We hope, you know, that, and here's an interesting one. Speaking of a guy who's associated with Baltimore, who's been not only a defensive coordinator, but a head coach, where's Steve Spagnuolo in all this? Yeah, and so what has happened to right. his reputation and his marketability and yeah. his candidacy across the league? Because he led the Giants defense that absolutely smothered Tom Brady and won Super Bowl 42. He was championed as a hero and a pioneer defensively. It's exactly the formula that the Lions have been looking to run defensively in terms of their defensive line creating all the pressure and you know creating havoc up front. He ends up getting the job at St. Louis, flames out there. He's a defensive consultant with the Baltimore Ravens and it seems to me that that would be a guy that if he still has the tangibles you're looking for would be a candidate and it's been strangely silent on the yeah. Steve Spagnuolo We front. talked about him when they came in for the Monday night game because we yeah. saw him on the sideline and you said He's a defensive consultant. We looked at the report beforehand, saw him there, and said, why? Well, I mean, what did go wrong? And I know you mentioned that as a possible candidate. This whole coaching search and the way things are going is such a crazy wheel. And we'll hear today, I'm mm -hmm. sure, mm -hmm. that Caldwell was a strong candidate from the get-go. Thanks, Lyle. Nice Thank to you. see you, Lyle. Thanks, Lyle. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you I'm, I'm sure we'll hear today that this was, I mean, that's, we can get into that in a little bit, the, I guess, control from the Lions today and, and the message we'll hear from them and what people maybe think will be coming from the Lions compared to what maybe the truth is. A couple questions coming in here. Steve Koffeld sent us a question on uh, to our email address. How important is gaining the respect of the players? I feel there needs to be more control of the team and more teamwork. I don't think he's alone in that yeah. at all. At all. But, I mean, that's another thing. We are not behind closed doors. We're not behind there. So what is the message? Who, who can say it? Will his demeanor that we see help? Will that be a big difference? Who knows? That remains all to be seen. How, What's the email address, Lyle, that people are sending these emails to? So I can tell them to, if people have emails. Do we know? Is it sports at WXYZ.com? Oh, you can, all right, you can send your comments right in on the bottom of the page, which you're watching this webcast right now, and the comments will get to us. This comes in from Wendy. What will Coach do to create co cohesive team attitude rather than a team of independent players? Checkers tournaments every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, like a roller skating. This is not when we go down the path of Mike McCarthy taking the Green Bay Packers out to, you know, team field trips. And I'm not saying that that's the solution. But there does need to be more cohesion. And a lot of times you walk into the locker room, and I'm not saying you can get a true vibe when you're there in terms of where people sit next to each other, is their interaction with each other. I don't read too much into that. I think the bonding comes during the team meetings, comes during the trips. Uh, and I, I get the sense that there is that connection but it's just not translating to the field. How many times would you see, I guess in 2012 you saw it a lot, where the team was in position to win and it was the defense that let them down? And that happened a couple of times this year. Now there was a combination of really all three phases letting them down at one point or another. But the infamous, Cincinnati with, yeah, with special teams. Right, the infamous fake field goal, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone points to the fake field goal, and I get that. And looking back in retrospect, it's a quote-unquote bad call. I'm more bothered by the fact that the defense gives up a 97-yard drive, right. you know? 
And so how does that reflect on your offense when you know they're down in the red zone and then the defense gives up a 97-yard drive and suddenly you lost the momentum? they got to feed off each other. I've never gotten the sense that they truly feed off each other. And you, they never put it together. I think that's the biggest complaint Lions fans still have is you have all these pieces of defense, this dominant front line. Well, when the front line has a great game, the offense sputters. Uh -huh. When the offense has a great game and puts together a 400-yard day, 500-yard day, the defense gives up 27, 35 points. That is the biggest complaint mm -hmm. that a lot of people have. Gerald sends us in a note that says, if Caldwell wins, everybody will love him, but he must make the playoffs right away. And that's something that oh, bottom line. I, I agree with. you yeah. got to get in the playoffs in 2014. Uh, or what, though? I mean, what are the Lions going to do? If they don't make the playoffs, they're going to can them? I just right. don't see that happening. I mean, you're going to be paying two coaches in 2015 for not coaching your team? Not happening. I just don't see that happening. With Megatron, Stafford, the Sioux, I, I could keep going on. The, the, the pieces are there. So really, guys, there's no excuse on one end. But then the other factor is, well, he's got to transition in and okay and kind of no, get back there's there. No room but, for that, it. but that's what I mean. It's yeah. like that's, he's kind of he's coming to a situation where it's like, dude, you better start winning now. It's got to happen. You and know that, who I want to hear from? I want to hear from Matthew Stafford. You know, Matthew Stafford's the linchpin in all this. He's the guy who is going to be most affected by this quarterback screw coming to town. And we haven't heard anything. We haven't heard Bupkis from the guy who's going to be most affected. Who was in the meeting right. and yeah. the interview with so, Caldwell. Right. If, right. if I'm the Lions, I'm trotting out my Matthew Stafford quotes front and center. And the fact that that hasn't, done, that ha that hasn't been done is surprising to me, and I'm wondering why it hasn't happened. Where is he? What's he doing? you got to get your franchise quarterback's reaction to this new hire because it all surrounds how he performs because he's coming off a terrible second half of the season. And say what you will about the whole interview process. Should Stafford have been there? Mm -hmm. He was. He was there. He was in there for the interview process. Clearly, they fed off each other because Mayhew and Luan aren't going to make the hire if their button heads or if that cohesiveness wasn't there. Right. They fed off each other. We heard that Caldwell it was impressed by the interview process, was mm -hmm. impressed by Stafford, studied him. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, where is that response? It's interesting. Now, it should be pointed out that the way that work went down is that Matthew happened to be in the building on the day that Caldwell was interviewing for the job. Caldwell asked if he could speak with Stafford. So it's not as though Martin Mayhew and Tom Lewan said, well, Matthew Stafford's going to be part of our interview process. That's not how it happened. It happened in, in the way I just described, that it was Caldwell who reached out saying he wanted to spend time with Stafford. So if anyone thinks that Stafford's the prima donna quarterback who gets the seal of approval on the head coach, that's not what happened. I do like the fact that Caldwell wanted to look Stafford in the eyes yeah. and talk to him about philosophy. Hey, as interviews go, he gets an A-plus, clearly. I mean, he blew them away with the studying, with the film. Now you got the job. What are you going to do with it? Uh, question comes in here. Wisenhunt and Caldwell are very similar in records and experience and background. This comes in from Rich. Why are people so angry? Rich, I think people are so angry because of the way it played out and the timing of it all and how reactive it looked and reactionary it looked that, oh, Wisenhunt's gone on Monday, bam, Tuesday we're going for Caldwell. Well, if you wanted Caldwell, why didn't you hire him last week? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty clear that you waited till this point because Wisenhunt was one of your guys. You can't dispute the fact that right. there was a private plane that was scheduled to go to San Diego on Monday and it never happened. So it was pretty evident that after interviewing Ken Wisenhunt once, you were planning to interview him again. Now the report is there was no formal offer that was made to Ken Wisenhunt ever. So the fact that the Titans offered $1 million more, that was preliminary discussion as best I can understand because they did not make an offer and they were not going to make a formal offer to Ken Wisenhunt until they had brought him to Detroit, he had seen the facilities, and he had met with all the key players, including the Ford family, which he never did. What do you guys think it says, though, about Caldwell when Tony Dungy reportedly has this very influential convincing, if you will, to William Clay Ford that uh, Caldwell was the man? I mean, that says a lot from Tony Dungy to, to be able, or about Caldwell, rather, for, for Dungy to be able to pick up the phone and make those calls and say, God, this is the man for you. As a few people have pointed out, Dungy was a pretty big backer of Rod Marinelli when he was hired by yep. the Lions a few years ago. So I respect Tony Dungy. Mm -hmm. He had a great career, does a lot of good things, is a good analyst on TV. But he's also not the one calling the shots. And I think if people start to get the, the message and, and feel that he is running the Lions, then why wasn't he hired by the Lions? Why isn't he here? Yeah, well, he, calling the shots? he was asked. Martin he was, Mayhew I know. asked Tony Dungy if he wanted to hire. Now, in my mind, you roll out the Brinks truck. If you want Tony Dungy, you do whatever it takes to get him there. Don't you know? stop with one question. Right. And I don't know the right. conversation, but it was right. reported that that was the first question asked to Tony Dungy. He said no, and they moved on. Uh, you and I talked about it. David, mm -hmm. you've talked about it. Mm -hmm. You keep going. You keep mm -hmm. asking. You push as much as you can. You send your big closers in. You've said that multiple times on the air. And right. you've seen in years past that it takes some convincing for these big names to be pulled back into the mix. And you have those shocking moments when the big names are announced as the head coaches. 
Did anyone think Joe Gibbs was going to come back to the Redskins after spending so many years at NASCAR? Right. But something happened right. where he was convinced to jump back into the pool. Somebody who was a good closer went and talked to Joe Gibbs and told him to come back. Yeah. Now, it didn't ultimately lead to another Super Bowl championship in Washington, but he turned him around a little bit and got him to the playoffs. <coughs> Bill Parcells. Who would have ever thought that Bill Parcells would end up as the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys? He had retired as the Jets head coach. He was out of the league for a couple of years. He was comfortable on television, much like Tony Dungy is. He had won a couple of Super Bowls. Jerry Jones went down there, and there's nobody in the world who's a better salesperson than Jerry Jones. He could sell ice to an Eskimo. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. The Lions don't have that, clearly, because they've never been able to go and get one of these guys and convince them that this is where you want to be to cement your legacy as one of the greatest coaches in the NFL, because it's never happened. There's never been the big-name guy. And I know that some people will go out there and say, well, Steve Mariucci was that big-name guy. I was never a believer in Steve Mariucci because I felt he inherited the George Seifert teams. Mm -hmm. And just as Jim Caldwell gets criticized for inheriting the Tony Dungy teams, I think Steve Mariucci had inherited the George Seifert teams, and he did an okay job with them. He got them back. He was also working with a Hall of Fame quarterback in Steve yeah. Young. He had Terrell Owens. He had a really talented roster. And I think that we saw the combination of Steve Mariucci with lesser talent and management that was absolutely abysmal at the time didn't work and it was an utter disaster. I think that's gotten us to where Lions fans are because Wojo said today in his Detroit news column there was mutual interest. There was talk with John Gruden. Couldn't seal the deal. He said he didn't want the job. They did approach him. They did talk to him about it. But you get back to the point where everyone wants a Super Bowl winning coach coaching their team. There are just a few guys out there. Bill Cowher, John Gruden. Uh, there are Most of them are still in coaching or retired. It's going to be tough to bring one of those in. So I think when you can't close, you have to settle for a second option, and that's why people are so disappointed. Because you know those coaches are out there, mm -hmm. you couldn't go get them, mm -hmm. and now you settle not even for your first settlement, but your second. Okay, so all of these coaches, and we know that Mike Zimmer was just hired by the Vikings. What jumped out at me with all these stories over the last couple of weeks is very interesting, and I'm trying to read between the tea leaves here. What do we feel about Josh McDaniels? A guy who Ugh. was with the Patriots. Well, why? Because he was young and passionate. Because he ruined and he was, Denver. He ruined Denver. He goes to Denver, and he failed in his first effort at age, what, 34? So here's a guy who goes and I would say learns his lesson, comes back, works again under Belichick. He was in the mix for the Browns job, and then suddenly he goes, well, you know what, I'm not interested. You know what I think happened? Hmm. I think Belichick goes to him and says, uh, Josh, wise up. Brady's going to play another four years or so. I'm going to be 65 by the time he retires. Can't you see the writing on the wall that says, you'd be a pretty darn good candidate to take over this franchise when I go? Uh, so I think that ultimately McDaniels will be a good head coach again. You talk about a guy who's worked with one of the best mm -hmm. quarterbacks in the league. Mm -hmm. You wait another week and you talk to him. And you say, you work with the Patriots and Brady right now. What are your thoughts on Stafford? It seems to me it never happened. It doesn't fit what they were looking for in terms of experience. No, but I think what turns me off a little bit about him is the way he goes in to Denver and starts picking people apart and says, I want this, I want that, I want that. You can't do that in the NFL. There's a certain salary cap with people that are in place that you're trying to fit. You can't just go get rid of people because you don't get along with them. you got to make things work. Right. I'm sure when Lions players said they loved playing for Jim Schwartz, they didn't all mean it. But that's what you do in the NFL. You make things work because the shelf life for coaches and for players is so short. And I think Josh McDaniels turned a lot of people off with that attitude. Maybe he has learned his lesson, but I think that is the history that people see. And for a team that has to win now, that's not enough experience and enough backup to get a guy in here to do that. Here you go. Cameron White checks in. What type of control will we see from Jim, and will the Fords let Caldwell be himself? Yeah. That's a great question. That's it. That is a great question. I believe, obviously, that Jim Caldwell was brought in here to do what Jim Caldwell does. Jim Caldwell is uh, even-keeled. He's level-headed. He's not too emotional, and that's what the Fords are looking for at this stage. I think they got uh, very frustrated by... I don't think fiery is the, white, the right word. I think the condescending nature of Jim Schwartz really pervaded the entire franchise and everybody at every level from front office people to players to media always got the sense from Jim that he felt entitled that he was talking down to you when he was talking down to you and no matter what you brought up to him he would always shoot it down and try to put you in your place first and then ultimately come around and answer the question even if you were right even and if he agreed with it that's a style that wore itself thin after four years, let alone five. And especially when you're losing. Because as everyone knows, you can act however you want in sports right. if you're winning. Rex Ryan did it with the Jets forever, and that started to wear tired in New York when you start losing. Yep. Holding players accountable in press conferences, if you look at Schwartz's style, how often did he hold players accountable? 
you know, if, if Johnson missed the route, how, you know, or Delmas in the secondary is doing something crazy. Caldwell comes in. That's unacceptable. I talked to Lewis about that, for example. That can't happen again. Yeah. That's going to translate pretty well here in the Motor City. All right, a couple more comments coming in. This one from Todd that says, what sort of defense will he run? Do you think the first-round pick will be a cornerback? An interesting question. We're already talking about the draft. That was a big thing with Wisenhunt. I think that Martin Mayhew is, in essence, demanding that they stick with the 4-3. Uh, that clearly might change, but the personnel is in place to run a 4-3 defense. He said he'll stay with the 4-3. I mean, and I shouldn't say he said that because we haven't talked to him, but right. it, it's been reported that he's sticking with the 4-3, which was a, like a linchpin four, wasn't it, going to Tennessee? Right. More now, control. The question is, do you think the first-round pick might be a cornerback? It might be, but I'd like someone to give me the proof of the first-round cornerbacks that have come in and been amazingly effective immediately. Mm -hmm. In my mind, you kind of let a cornerback mature someplace, and then maybe that's the position that you go pluck a, a really good free agent, mm -hmm. which has surprised me the Lions haven't done that. Mm -hmm. And there was talk, and I mean, let's be honest, everyone wanted Nandi Asamoa. Didn't quite work out for the Eagles, no, it did right? Not so at all. you got to be careful what you wish for. You don't always know what you're going to get. Marcus Thurman checks in. It's time to win now. I feel Jim Schwartz lost control of the team years ago. Let's give Jim Caldwell a chance. Lions will make the playoffs next season. Marcus, from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> Zach Weiss, I know Caldwell is the guy... Uh, I know Caldwell got the job, not the other guy. Do you think Wisenhunt would have been better than Caldwell? Bottom line, would Wisenhunt have been better than Caldwell in your eyes? Yes, because I think you come in with a command and an experience of being around a Super Bowl team in Pittsburgh. And you talked about bringing a coach in and saying, come to Detroit where you can win. There's a winning atmosphere. He was born and raised in that in Pittsburgh. He mm -hmm. flourished and moved up the food chain there to offensive coordinator, ran things there, won a Super Bowl here went and became a head coach, took another team to a Super Bowl. So I think right there, you're raised in an atmosphere of a winning culture, and then you take that elsewhere and succeed. I think that trumps anything Jim Caldwell's done. You know what? I think Wisenhut would have been a great fit here, but who's to say, and I know it might sound crazy, but who's, not to, who's to say that Caldwell may, may, be the, may not be the better person for the job? Maybe he is the better person for the job than Wisenhut. You, let's look at some numbers here. The Ravens, 29th in total, total offense under Caldwell this season. 25th in scoring also. And then you look at what, he, what he's done in the past. Now, Tom, you raised a good point earlier. Okay, Peyton Manning gets banged up. What's your backup plan? You guys failed miserably that season. Okay. But what if he has another backup plan in place? Maybe they run the football a little more. Those are who, awesome. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, it, we, we, none of us know. But I, I'm going to give the guy the benefit of the doubt right now. I like the hiring but I have some questions, like most fans do. The worst thing that could happen is for the Tennessee Titans to start 5-0 and for the Detroit Lions to start on 5 oh, or 2-3. and three. I mean, But we've all experienced every situation, so there really is no worst thing that can happen. Especially here. We've the experienced the worst thing that can happen, which Hello. is losing every single game. Yeah. We'll wrap it up with this. A comment coming in from Chris, really a question to us. Good hire. Project what you think the Lions record will be next year. I think that's where Lions fans are today. Yesterday, they were disgusted by the hire. Today, it's another day as a Lions fan. You look ahead with the talent, and you look ahead to that roster, and you see what is in place. It's playoffs or bust, because if you don't make the playoffs, that but hire what's will bust? Be... What's bust? That's the problem I have. No, there I is no bust. He's not going to get fired. Anywhere. It's a year where he's going to be able to do, in essence, whatever the heck he's going to do, because there is no chance that the Lions will be paying two coaches not to coach them. In essence, paying three coaches in 2015. So whatever Jim Caldwell does this year, he can go 0-16. He's not going away next year. Do you He's feel the pressure, guy. Jim? Do you the, feel it? <laughs> that, not, in my mind, not a lot of pressure on him to do anything uh, this year when you consider how the NFL coaching tree works and how salaries are. I mean, I, it will never happen that they're going to pay three guys to be the head coach of the Lions in 2015, which would happen if they fired Jim Caldwell after year one. Final thoughts. We're going to sign off here. You know what? We're, it's a wait-and-see mode. Again, I, I, I like the hiring. Uh, I think he, he definitely brings a lot of value. I'm curious to see what he has to say. And we're, we're, you know, we're going we're gonna to bring it to people later on tonight. I want honesty. I want as much honesty as possible today. I think uh, somebody made a, a good point today, Josh Kastenstein for the Detroit News. When Jerry Kill was hired as Minnesota's coach, mm -hmm. his wife said, well, he wasn't my first choice. Or he said his wife didn't pick him as a first choice. <laughs> Bring that honesty on today and say, you know what, this is a guy with a great track record that we've seen win at different levels, that we've seen win in mm -hmm. good situations, bad situations mm -hmm. throughout an entire season. 
bring a little bit of transparency because I think that's what Lions fans have had a big problem with forever with this franchise and in the past two weeks with this past opening. All right, good words. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for the time. I hope you enjoyed us uh, talking about the Lions head coach, and thank you for your comments that came in on Facebook, on Twitter, the emails, the comments, the phone calls. We'll have to do some more of this. Stick with us, 4 o'clock live on Channel 7, online, on your tablet. We'll bring the news conference introducing Jim Caldwell. He'll join me live right at the top of Action News at 5 for a one-on-one conversation, and we'll have the entire situation covered like a blanket from down at Ford Field. But for now, David Solano, Brad Galley, Tom Lydon. Have a great Wednesday.